Hey everybody out there, Spencer Gray from Gray Capital. Are you interested in multifamily syndication? You you understand that doing larger deals, larger apartment buildings is the more efficient investment vehicle, the smarter way to invest, but you're wondering, you know, I don't have a track record. I don't know. I don't know if I can raise the millions of dollars required to take down these projects. How do I get started? Other than, you know, buying a single family home, a duplex, a five unit, 10, 50, a hundred that can take years. How do you accelerate your investment career by working smarter, still working hard, but working smarter rather than harder? Well, it's exactly what we did. We started in 2015 with zero multifamily units. And now in 2020, we almost have a portfolio of 9,000 multifamily apartment units. What we did to be able to achieve that is we were able to bring value to existing experienced multifamily operators. And by forming a partnership with them, we were able to form joint ventures and co-general partnerships to be able to partner and take down these large apartment buildings. We didn't have all the systems in place like we do now. We didn't have the track record like we we do now. And But by leveraging the experience, the track record, the systems of others, we were able to scale at a rate much faster than if we were just doing it on our own and doing one deal at a time. There's an incredible amount of benefits by taking this approach. One, you don't have to have the staff, all the resources set in place like you do when you're an actual full-scale operator. And by not having to have all those systems, it opens up a lot of bandwidth to focus on what you are the best at. You should be focusing on your highest and best use and not trying to, you know, dabble in every single aspect of the you know, multifamily business because it's a true business. It's not just finding a deal, raising money. It's actual operations, boots on the ground and getting things done in order to effectively execute a multifamily project. You need to find one that has the track record, has a strategy that's aligned with yourself has interests that's aligned with you and your investors. And most importantly, because your track record, your reputation is also on the line, you need to be working with someone who is completely trustworthy and a moral person. And you don't wanna get into a partnership or relationship too quickly. You wanna know the individual, you wanna know their company, and you need to be fully confident because you're gonna be basically entrusting that operator to take whatever your bring of value you want them to be able to shepherd that in a way that you feel comfortable with, just as if you were the one that was totally running the deal itself. So let's get into that in a little bit more detail. If you're gonna be partnering someone to leverage their experience and track record, you need to make sure that they actually have that experience and track record. If this is someone's, you know, maybe their their first deal also, but maybe they have a couple more pieces uh, put together, you know, that might make sense because, you know, they're certainly looking for a lot more help but you want to maximize your chance of success. So by finding an operator who has that established track record, they've done multiple deals, they've had, they've done multiple successful projects, but at the same time, they're not so big where they don't need any help. You know, large groups when they have, you know, 10,000 units, you know, or many thousands of units, they can raise all the capital they need. They have all the systems and they may not need to bring in a partner like a, a through a joint venture or a co-GP. Um, so you wanna find someone who has an established track record, but they're still looking to do more and what you can bring to them is accretive to what they can do. So you're not gonna be duplicating anything. You're gonna be bringing something to the table that they are either insufficient in or maybe they could do better or they just don't have. So you also need to make sure that the strategy that the operator that you're going to partner with is aligned with your own. So, you know, if you are more interested in, you know, severely distressed real estate, um, you know, going in, doing full repositions, buying a, you know, unoccupied property, you know, to look for this huge pop once you stabilize it, you need to find an operator who has the same strategy. Also a hold period. If you're trying to get in and out of a deal within you know, one to three years, you need to find an operator who has that same time horizon. You also wanna make sure that everybody's interests align. That means your interests, the operator's interests, but most importantly, your investor's interests. Again, your entire track record and reputation is gonna be based on the deals that you do. You can't turn around and say, 
Well, my our operating partner in the my that's in the the general partnership group, you know, he made these decisions. And I don't agree with them. You need to be sure that everyone's interest and everyone is incentivized in the same ways. And again, you want to do a lot of research, take time to get to know your partner to make sure that, you know, they are of the same moral character that you are. But why is all this important and what does it do to be able to leverage one's systems and experience? So again, you know, you're building your track record on another person's track record. So instead of going to your potential investors and saying, you know, I, these are all the great reasons to invest in multifamily and this, this is why this deal is so great. While that's important and that's good, most investors, one of their first questions are going to be, well, you know, have you done this before? What are your past projects that are similar to this project? And show me where you've been able to execute and be successful. Otherwise, you know, this is going to be a learning experience for them. And as an investor, I don't know if I want to pay for your education. On the other hand, though, if you say, I'm partnering with this incredible multifamily operator, we're putting a partnership together or a joint venture, they've, they've, uh, they manage, you know, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 units, they've done 10 multifamily deals. These are all the projects that have been successful. These are the typical metrics. This is how their, their projects are doing. You are a part of that group. You are a part of that general partnership group typically, or your entity is investing in that group. You can take their, that experience and say, you're not just, you, you, you have to be honest with them. Say, yeah, this is my first ap apartment deal. I found a great partner to um, work with that you're not going to be trusting that I know how to run all the operations. I don't know how to run all the operations, but I can tell you why multifamily investing is such a good strategy. While this deal is great, and I can tell you all the great things about a partner, the manager who's actually gonna be running the deal. You can talk about their experience and highlight what they're good at, what they've done, and then highlight your experience as well. Whether it's, you know, hey, I've been investing in single family homes, they know how real estate works. Also, the biggest thing beyond their track record and experience is the systems and operations. Who's gonna be managing the property at the property level itself, the property management? Who's gonna be doing the asset management, really controlling what the property managers do and the overall strategy of the business it's, itself? This cannot just be you know, one person who's just making decisions here or there while they're also raising capital and they're looking for deals. And you have to have a dedicated team that's focusing on this. So if you don't have that, by finding someone who does, that can be a part of your team and your system. You can get your potential investors excited about the idea that you have all these systems through this entity that you're partnering with. And again, it's just an incredible way to scale your investments. You're probably asking, okay, this sounds great. Now, how do I bring value to an operator? What's accretive to the investment itself? And you know, I may not have a lot of capital. I may not be an accredited investor. What can I bring that they need? The fact is that there are several different ways that you can bring value to an operator that allows that operator to be able to do more deal deals, expand their bandwidth and get more things done. Now, the most obvious and what I've been touching on mostly kind of throughout this video is the ability to raise capital and then bring that capital to a project. If you can bring, you know, a $500,000, a million dollars, two, two and a half million dollars, you know, to the right operator, that's going to be uh, incredibly powerful. And it's not that they can't raise that capital, but it might mean that they're not going to have to tap their investor pool so much to kind of to drain them. So because if some investors, if you're, you know, a typical 50,000, 100,000, $200,000 investor, and if you're trying to raise $5 million, you know, you may be having to push your investors to uh, invest an amount that they would typically, more than they would typically do. So they usually invest 50, but you're pushing them to do 100 because you may, maybe they're doing a larger deal. But if you can come to an operator and say, look, I can bring a million dollars out of this $5 million that you're gonna have to raise, that's a million dollars less that they have to tap from the, their LPs. And assuming that they could actually raise that million dollars, that's a million dollars that can go towards their next project. And again, that's just incredibly powerful, being able to do more deals. And again, it's it's additive, it's accretive. You're not taking away, you're not replacing, 
what you're doing is you're um, you're expanding. You know, you're, you're allowing one plus one to equal three as opposed to two. That um, security and knowing that you have a certain amount of capital committed to from an investor again can be very powerful to an operator. And so you may not have to do any extra work. You, you don't you don't have to go out and raise capital. You know, put the deal together by just making that commitment. That may be meaningful enough to a syndicator or an operator to say, we're going to cut you into the general partnership group, receive accelerated returns if you can make that commitment. And again, it's all up to what you can negotiate with the operator. Everyone is going to value uh, what you can bring differently. If someone can raise as much capital as they need, they may not need you to bring any capital at all, but they may need something else. If you can find a deal that is a good deal, it makes sense, if it's their investment criteria, you know that is certainly worth something. Now, again, it all relates to what value, how the operator values that. Maybe it's only a small percentage of the general partnership. You know, maybe it's uh, you're, you're getting a fee for that, or maybe it's huge. Maybe you can negotiate a large percentage of the general partnership because let's say maybe you've gotten it under contract, you can still assign it. You know, in a sense, you're wholesaling the deal, but as opposed to being compensated, which you could just you could take that route and just get a check. Maybe you say, I want to be in the general partnership group for 10%, 15%, 20%. Again, whatever you can negotiate, there's no real market for this stuff. So being a KP or a loan guarantor, the way that these deals get done and the, the way that you are able to secure the debt that's needed to purchase these assets, typically the general partnership that is running the deal has to have loan guarantors that have a combined net worth equal to the loan itself. Now, a lot of operators, you know, they may be building their net worth, maybe, but they may not have a seven and a half million dollar net worth. And then if you look at these, the deals that are more in the $25 million range, you know, that can be pretty steep to have to have, you know, a significant amount of net worth to be able to get the loan secured and the deal closed. So what often happens is an operator will bring in a partner who has a, usually a high net worth individual or they have access to a balance sheet that they can put up as part of the guarantee, uh, as the general partnership and add to that guarantee. And so this is something that it require it's it does add slightly more risk because you are guaranteeing a loan. Typically that loan is non-recourse though, but your added percentage of the GP, if you're also an investor, that goes to accelerate your returns. You know, there's a couple forms you have to fill out. You have to provide some financial statements, a schedule of real estate, um, and do a credit check. But if you're getting 15, 20, 25 percent of the GP group for just you know putting up your balance sheet, you know that turns a you know a 15 percent IRR. That could turn that into a you know a, a 20 percent IRR, 25, even 30 percent IRR because of your share of the general partnership in the promote and you're not really having to do any more work. So there's a couple ways you can bring value. And again, it's all what the operator themselves value and what they need. You know, you could provide asset management. You now, typically an experienced operator, they're already doing asset management, but if it's a relatively less inexperienced operator, maybe they have just enough track record, maybe they've got all the capital ready to go, um, but you know, they don't have all of the systems in place, you can provide one of those systems such as asset management or even property management and being able to then be a part of the GP. Again, it all comes back to what the operator needs. Again, an operator may have this or they may not. If you say, look, I'm gonna cut my fee to essentially break even. I'm more interested in the success of the project rather than making uh, money off of my development fee. But all I want is, you know, again, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, negotiate what you can. If you can get cut into that general partnership group, you're also an investor, you can accelerate your returns, even if you don't have any money in the deal. But it's a great way to build wealth, to own a piece of a large multifamily building without having to put up any of your own money at risk and not having to have all of the pieces put together all by yourself. Uh, maybe you're a marketing expert and maybe, you know, this is something that a lot of syndicators, you know, they've got the asset management, they can they can uh, find the deals, they can raise the money, they can they can they can do the deal itself. But 
you know, maybe the, uh, a little bit of help in the marketing department could really move the needle for them. Maybe they could raise some some more capital. Maybe um, they could just get their name out a little bit more. Maybe the property itself needs a little help with marketing, needs a new website. Um, again, that's going to depend on what the operator needs, but you know, it's a way that you can bring value. Maybe you can provide audits, financial services, um, you know, at cost, or just be in the GP group to, um, you know, just add a little bit of your insight. Again, it comes down to what you can negotiate. So at the end of the day, if you're interested in scaling your multifamily investment career, you're interested in syndicating, but you're looking at a way to get started, a foot in the door, pick one of these strategies, what you can be successful at. And again, the, the most direct route and what is typically the most accretive to an operator is the ability to raise capital. So let's say you've, you know, 10 investors, they all can, they would all be interested in investing, you know, $100,000 in a project by approaching an operator and saying, look, I've got a million dollars I can bring into your deal, but I've got two other operators that I really like and I can bring into their deal as well. How much is that worth it to you? You know, would you be able to give up 5% of the general partnership, 10% of the general partnership, um, if I can bring this million dollars to your deal? I do have to, you know, give a little bit of a disclaimer. You need, you know, I do need to mention these investments are regulated by the SEC, and there are a lot of laws that govern govern how one can raise money for a security. Now, you can't be going out bringing capital to a deal and getting a fee because you really need to be a broker dealer in order to do that. I'm not an attorney. I can't give legal advice. But if you are a member of the company who is raising money for that company, that's what a co-GP is, you can get around and be compensated through interest in that company itself because you'll become an owner of that management entity that manages the property and receives the promote from the investment itself. So it's worth um, spending a couple hours speaking to an attorney, making sure what you're doing is 100% above board and tying in your operating partner to make sure the way you're structuring everything is 100% of above board. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're going to be putting out a lot more content related to um, different ways you can joint venture or co-GP. You know, again, it's one of the ways that we were able to scale quickly. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, you can go to our website, greatcapitalllc.com. We send out uh, weekly research reports, aggregate news articles, and point to a lot of things that are going on in the multifamily and commercial real estate industry that you may have missed. So go to our website, um, sign up for our newsletter, check out the blog where we're going to be posting a lot of this stuff on being able to co-GP and joint venture, but also a lot of just different topics for multifamily investing in general. So, you know, like this, leave a comment, go to the website and hope you're having a great day, great week. And uh, thanks for watching.